listen. Sorry. It's on. Is everything on? Yep. It's okay. on. Is everything on? My name is Pete Matilla. I'm an artist blacksmith and I'm based in Hobart, Tasmania, Australia. What's passionate about it? I guess I've just like swept up in the storm of it all at the moment. I have been asked to describe about the project that I was involved in making a sculpture for Burning Man. So the project started, I was asked to do a design for a collaboration with a number of other international blacksmiths. During that year was the, the Da Vinci village in the center of it. And um, so there was a number of skilled makers surrounding the man that year. And I've, I designed some wings that then were built by some blacksmiths in California. And those wings were then brought out to the playa and we ran a three-day workshop forging feathers with the people of Burning Man. And they, everybody was lined up and there was, I would say, maybe like eight forges going and really skilled smiths from all over the world helping, helping out making these feathers. And everybody got to leave with, with one of these feathers. How did the project end up happening? Uh, okay, so my friend Kyle um, Lorraine, who works out there at Burning Man, was like, we should design a piece. It would be great to have some forged steelwork as some sculpture out there. And one year I came up with a design and it, we didn't get any funding for it. And then the following year we presented this wing idea and, we were, and Kyle was able to get some funding for it. We put the word out to a number of other makers that were able to, that were either in that um, Nevada, California area to, to be able to do the building of it. And when we all met up at, at Black Rock City, we then were able to like share our skills with everybody. And for us, it was like, it really ticked a lot of the boxes of what Burning Man meant for us is like one, being able to present artwork um, and two, having that interactive element of like skill share and being there. The sculpture itself had a few different levels. It was like one, there was this very much like built thing. And then two, all the people coming in and like sharing and making parts with us that then they could go home. So it's one, you know, you've got this experience of the object and then two, like you start to get the flavor of the making of it. And for, for us, that was really like a pinnacle of, of that whole experience there. Right. And where, where was the team of blacksmiths from? Okay, so there, was, there were people from Colombia, another person from the UK, um, myself, that was from Tasmania. There were another, another blacksmith from Canada, a few others from scattered from around from the United States. There was another one from, there was Benny from Tassie as well, so that's good. Two Tasmanians. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and what was the response to the artwork? Well, it was funny because like the the design I felt worked really well because in that space, as we all know, like there's a lot of photographs that are taken of people with the artwork, and because it was a, it's like a symmetrical wing shape, it created a really good backdrop for people to like stand there and have their photographs taken. A lot of performers climbed it and multiple performers. There were people doing suspensions, body suspensions off of it. Um, so even the piece alone left there, you know, drew attention and had a lot of like, had a lot of attention. And the performative aspect of it, of us going and there was, it was flat out. Like it was nonstop line the whole time. Like, yeah, like a Burning Man experience. Like most of the people after you were done forging with them were like so grateful and there was lots of hugs happening and just because like people don't, didn't seem to, they don't really have that opportunity to have that sort of hands-on experience, let alone, you know, with working, using fire as a tool and, and forging and having a lot of interaction in, in that space. Um, and so it was, it was taken really well. 
a true community experience of both skilled blacksmiths yeah. and um, introducing people to an art form that they don't normally get access to. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And we were able to do that all in the desert, and it was it was great. It was one of as far as it, it would top any blacksmithing demonstration I've ever done, and the response of like how grateful and it was just yeah just so much sharing and the response is really good whereas I, I you know and i also think as part of practitioner of you know maker or artist that sharing and skill sharing is it is is part of that responsibility as well and offering that to people so yeah that interactive element that burning man has for people was just it was the best and how many times have you gone out to burning i've been man? i've been out there three times and that was probably and I think a lot of people feel the same when they go out there the first time and you try everything out and you're having these experiences and then you're like, okay, well, what can I, what can I bring to this space and how can I contribute in some way? And being, having that opportunity to share my passion and what I really love with other people and seeing that same like glint in their eye when they're able to like, they're shaping something, then it's, like, I was like, well, it's not really going to get any better than this for me. So, um, and I think that that's, that's the way that a lot of people, and that sort of having that spirit of like, that sharing spirit and also that receiving, you know, that open to like, oh, what, what is this like? Yeah, that's what I remember from it. Yeah. What drives you in your art? What are you passionate about? There's multiple things, which is like, it's really difficult to narrow it down into a few sentences. In a social way, there's a lot of self-empowerment through skills. There's an immense amount of creative freedom. I feel that like steel itself is a really accessible and immediate medium. There's other stuff when we talk about metalwork, like especially with blacksmithing is you have, hold on, let me go back to, with metalwork as like a sculptural form, you've got an additive process, a subtractive process, and a material displacement. And with blacksmithing, it's all three of that. And I've been doing it for, probably 16 years and I just, I still really, really love it. I don't know, like, I think it gets to a point to where, like, you're really passionate about it, you're driven, you're doing all this stuff, and then it's been so long you've been working through it, it actually becomes part of you. And I, I feel that's where I'm currently at. So just to answer, to like, try to answer that question, it's like, I couldn't imagine it any other way. What, um, what brought you to blacksmithing? Um, well, I, I went to trade school to study boilermaker welding and engineering and then got an apprenticeship at a blacksmith shop and did all that training. Then I went to art school. So I was, by the time I, like there was always, there was always creativity there, but really taking that metalworking vocabulary and putting it into a art context was, yeah, like that's probably where things really started. And then I've traveled all over the place ever since and done all this journeyman work and all that sort of stuff. For people at home who don't know what a journeyman is, can you describe yeah. that? Traditionally, in any of like the old crafts, you would you learn from, say, a master or a skilled, skilled set of people. And then once you reach a certain point, then you go off and you learn from other skilled people. We could start to say that if you learned a trade or a skill from five different people, then you become the sixth. So going on a journey and learning and all that stuff, and then you go back or then you set up somewhere, then you're kind of collecting that lineage of, of all of that and that understanding. And then, you know, that's, that's the basics of a journeyman. Yeah. And would you say you're continuing the tradition, helping other people learn skills? Um, I think that there is a hunger for skills and there is responsibility in, in mentoring. So yes, and um, yeah, I, think there, I think that there is, so yeah. Yeah, I've been to a couple of your workshops. I think they're yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Making bubble blowers out of the yeah, was pretty right. great. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have a tour of your workshop if you're all right with that. Okay, yeah, we can do that real quick. So, um, well, I only have a sort of small space at the moment, but at least it's all the, the grinding area. We're working on a few jobs in there. Um, we've got 
something we're working on here. We do for larger scale work, we make models and things. Um, so this is a model for two large sets of gates that we're going to be making starting very shortly. Um, there's also like half a model up there. And then we've got all these tools for like pneumatic power hammers and um, mechanical power, power hammers and a few forges and lots of tools. Everything in this space is pretty much on wheels so we can move stuff out of the way and make larger work. And then outside, we want to go outside. I feel really lucky to be able to be right on the water. We've got some, some existing sculptures out here. Are you allowed to describe what it does a little bit? At the moment I can just say that it, it's a collaboration between myself and a dancer from Melbourne. Who, so this piece will then, it will go into her hands and then she'll write a performance for four weeks with six dancers, some of the arts festivals around the state. So it's, it's almost completed. And so we'll see, you have to stay tuned on what's going to happen actually. <laughs> it is a really cool, like, it, making the effort to do something that's really community based, ethically minded, and I've, I've seen it's, it's what, it, what it can do and really enliven and enrich in places. Um, and using art as a vehicle is, is the best. Any, I'm totally supportive of any of that, that stuff, yeah. I like your garden. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we've got some fruit trees this weekend we're going to put into those milk crates.